What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. Everybody, welcome back. Uh, Darren Tipton again, VB Adrenaline Podcast. It, uh, it's been a couple weeks, but things are fast and furious in the club world. Um, they're fast and furious in the recruiting world, and everybody is busy, busy. Qualifier season is upon us. But uh, today, my guest is Tyler Strom, and he's the 15th coach at Legacy Volleyball Club in Michigan. And um, social media is an amazing thing. Um, I literally learned Tyler's name about 48 hours ago, and we're here. We'll, we'll talk about his famous Instagram uh, being mic'd up. But but Tyler, thanks, first of all, for taking time to talk with me. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, so uh, uh, Instagram reel went crazy, but I, as I did more research and, and um, investigating on who you were, you're a longtime coach at Legacy. Tell us about your career there briefly before we jump into the social media. Um, so, well, first I'd like to, you know, obviously thank you guys for having me. Uh, yeah. It's a pleasure. Um, so I've been with Legacy 15 years and, you know, coached every age group with the 14s, coached most levels going from, you know, state and local teams all the way to our top teams. Um, took a, a little bit of a hiatus in there, coached at Central Michigan, um, made it to the NCAA tournament. I think the only time we've ever been in the NCAA tournament and won the MAC. Um, but realized in, in very short time that college coaches are wildly underpaid for what they do. And uh, they, you know, I, I found that, okay, I, I like this, but I'm not sure I could make a living out of it, you know, just yet. Um, came back to Legacy and have kind of been along for the ride when it comes to the ascent that this club's taken over the past, I don't know, six, seven years. Yeah. It's really been impressive to see, you know, a club go from, seven teams and you know 80 girls to over a thousand girls and i mean 800 teams you, it's just it's it's wild to see how far this club has come in a, in a very short period of time well and we were talking before we started recording and i live in sioux falls and very comparable to what kairos has done with their growth um but moving up the national rankings like you guys have um, what what do you think's been the key to your guys' growth or explosion, I should say, the last few years? Um, so I think there's two things to that. One of them is, you know, you have to have talent to start and then you have to train. Um, I think that, you know, as you as you mentioned before, social media and our social media and our branding, I would put up against anybody in the country. I mean, A5 does a really nice job. T Street does a really nice job. But the sheer amount of content that is now being pushed out. You know, if you're trying to recruit a, a 9, 10, 11, 12 year old girl, I mean, this is this is the way you get, you know, this is the way you get into their home. This is, you know, this is way easier than praying a kid comes to tryouts. And, you know, if they do, then you have to recruit them there. I mean, most of the recruiting process is, is already done once they open that reel or they open that, you know, they see their friends and they see the jerseys. And I think that it's something we we do a lot of. We we are very very conscious of the brand, of how we're branded, of the you know the quality of the jerseys, the quality of the social media, um, the tournaments that we go to are obviously dedicated to one recruiting and two to trying to play the most difficult schedule we possibly can. 
Um, and then I think the second thing is, is and culture gets thrown around a lot as a buzzword and, you know, maybe not something that, that, how do I put this? Maybe not something that everybody should be throwing around, but the culture here is is outstanding. I mean, we, as, as especially our top coaches, the coaches that have been with us the longest, we're in each other's weddings. We go out, you know, we go out with each other when we're not coaching and when we're not, you know, we have each other over for dinner. So it's actually genuine when you have four or five coaches sitting on a bench. It's not just doing it for show. Like you actually have friends on the bench that are trying to do the best they can by the person who's usually standing at the end of the bench. Well, and I think uh, one thing I've learned with a culture, this, um, the top programs where when teams at qualifiers at the bigger tournaments, they get beat out and then they go over to watch another team that's advancing to the semifinals or the championship. And we talked about the 16 U championship at triple crown. Um, but there were other legacy teams there packing the stands, parents. And from what I've learned, that's a, a positive sign of true culture. Yeah. I mean, I think that you, it, it starts from the top down and the directors do an outstanding job of trying to promote that. And I think us as coaches do the same thing. And I mean, we're all, we're all gym rats, but we're all wildly competitive. And, you know, it's just, that's the culture that we want to breed in this gym. Like we want to win at all, you know, no matter what, like that is, we want to train, we want to push girls to the next level. We want to do right by these girls, but you know, there's the best coaches in the country are, are, are going to tell you that like, it's, they're competitive. And yeah. if, if they can't do it themselves, like what's the next best thing to do? Well, I, I sure as heck can't do it myself anymore. So the next best thing is living, you know, vicariously through these girls and, and competing every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday during practice, and then every you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday in tournaments. So it's it's definitely a, a culture that we try and breed. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, we're we're ridiculously competitive as coaches, even with each other. It's friendly competition, but there's no doubt. Like it's you know you you want to win, and and you want to be the team that's getting posted on social media, and you want to do it's 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 something that that we love, and I think it's very healthy competition for us. Well, we'll go back and uh, we'll talk more about um, recruiting your club, some some specifics on on legacy. But let's get back to the reason we got connected, and I want you to help me. I'm a film guy, right? And I also told you, and everybody knows how I'm trying to learn this game. Um, so yeah, I thought uh, the reel was hilarious. Um, the reel was hilarious, but it also. Um, I was sitting there learning during your coaching tips and rewinding it, rewinding it for that. So break this down for us, how this came about um, exactly. Did they, re, did they uh, mic you up the whole weekend or how did this come about? Is it something they do with different coaches or how did this happen at Triple Crown? So this is something where we've added, we've actually added another social media guy. So CJ is our 13s coach. Oh, wow. and he oh, wow. If you feel yourself like you were ahead of that ball. You want me to talk over it? No, we'll get uh, I'm just making oh, sure. Okay. Uh, no yeah. worries. Okay. Um, yeah, so CJ is our CJ is, is our 13 ones coach. And with the sheer amount of work that it takes to put out content like this, like he just acknowledged that like, hey, I can't do, I can't be a coach. And whenever I'm not coaching, be in the gym and trying to, you know, take videos and take pictures and get content. <clears throat> So we added another um, content producer, uh, Smooth Wave, up in Ohio. Okay. And Colby's, you know, he's same thing, newer to the game. But he's, I mean, super, super active. And he's always trying to come up with, you know, new and, and fascinating ways to, you know, to market us and to market the girls. And this was just one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more colorful. We'll say that than I was in the video. I had to tone it down a little bit. And, you know, my girls were kind of giving me some grief because they're like, that's not, that's not the normal you. We want to see, like, we, we know the four letter words that come in there. Like we want to see that guy. And, you know, so I had to tone it down a little bit, thankfully in that particular match, we were, we were up from start to finish. So there wasn't too many, uh, wasn't too many opportunities for me to lose my mind a little bit, but yeah, he asked me on Friday, he said, Hey, you know, I'm, I want to mic up a coach and, you know, the way that you interact with the girls is usually, you know, pretty entertaining. So would you mind doing it? And I said, yeah, of course. Like, I, 
anything to help. And it was, uh, it, the, what he, the final product turned out, you know, pretty cool. Really cool. So we're going to watch that now and, and stop a couple of times as I have questions. We're going to break down your mic'd up segment and then um, I have some follow-up questions that go with it. But this is, uh, bring it up here again. Uh, so this is uh, Coach Strom at the Triple Crown um, in Kansas City a couple of weeks ago. And and this thing went kind of viral on on um, on Instagram is where I saw it. So let's just break it down and let everybody watch it here. Drive hard and then roll that thing to campfire. Listen, you've, you've completed one semester of high school. Let's go ahead and pump the brakes on your GPA, okay? Okay, right there, let's stop. Maybe um, in the running already for quote of the year. Um, <laughs> break that Break that down. Was just a couple kids talking during warm-ups? Or how did yeah, that they, they asked me, the, you know, I swear to God, these girls ask me some of the strangest questions. And, like, we'll, we're, we're starting to match. Like, tensions should be high. And all of a sudden, I'll get a, hey, do you think, you know, this one happened to be Michaela asking about Soph? And she's like, what do you think Soph's GPA is? And, I, you know, I just responded. I said, I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty good. Like, I, you know, I think she probably does pretty well in school. So, I don't know, three, five, three, six. And they were just mortified that she's like, well, I actually have a three, nine. And it's like, okay, let's go <laughs> ahead and take it easy there. Like, you've, you've completed acting and gym one and gym two. And social studies, it's like, let's, let's wait a couple more semesters and then we can start, you know, pumping up the GPA. All right, we'll keep going. No Zambonian today, please. Oh! All right, sorry, I have to ask because what, what the heck does Zambonian mean? Break it down for me. So I'm a hockey guy living in Michigan. I mean, yeah. the, the Red Wings are a way of life and grew up playing hockey. And a Zamboni is just something that, you know, it's on the ice the entire time and never gets, you know, it never leaves the ground so when i talk about zambonying i mean kate's already on the ground before the ball is even attacked or, or deflected or whatever it is and so you know we try and say no zambonying when a girl's already on the ground you know cleaning the floor without even touching the ball yet that's perfect <laughs> free ball free ball free ball right sink your hips and let your platform do the work you're the most gifted platform i've maybe ever coached that's a hell of a swing kate Hell of a swing. What shot? That's a quality pen, Lex. I love a quality pen. Good ball, Marley. Everything is really tight. That's why you're collapsing on everything. If we're here, then we collapse forward, but it's up. Yeah. Not ideal, but it'll work. <laughs> so is this, how much of this is your normal personality? Or, I mean, is that really you coming out? Or was that a biked up? Oh, hey, no. Biked up. That's like I said, usually it's a bit more colorful in my language. And I mean, especially when we're, you know, that, that game was, he picked it. We'll just say he picked a good one to, uh, to go, you know, to, to film me on because that game was pretty much in hand for the majority of it. But when it gets tight, I mean, it's, it's the competitor that comes out in me. It's the same way when I used to play, it was, I was that exact person and no, that's, that's pretty genuine right there. There's not much that, that changes you know, with a mic or without a mic, other than maybe being a little more PG. <laughs> Let's see. If you feel yourself like you were ahead of that ball, drive hard and then roll that thing to campfire. Listen, you've you completed one semester. Start over again. I, what I wanted to talk to you about, and and I think uh, we missed the, the end of where you talked to your team, but what... What I advocate for, um, and I'm sure there's times you get intense and have to be intense, but I just see so many of the productive teams where coaches are coaching and educating rather than yelling and screaming. Does that? And, and I call it the the new wave. I don't I don't call it soft. I don't. I just. Do you, Am I accurate on that? There's a lot more of that going on than maybe in the past, where it's more the educating and talking. Yeah. There's times you got to get, you know, crank up the intensity a little bit, but is that how you guys do things? And, and is there more of that now than maybe 10, 15 years ago? Well, I would argue that the culture has changed around men's and women's sports that you can't do what you used to be able to do. We'll just say, especially in the men's game, like you're not, you're, you can't, you can't talk the way you used to be able to talk, you know, without getting an email. So with that, I mean, I would argue that most of our coaching is done 
in practice. Like for the most part, if I could sit there and just kind of observe and, and write some notes down and take and, and the teams doing what they're supposed to do, that's ideally what we want to see because all, you know, all your practicing, all your yelling should be, you know, should be done in practice. In games, you're either going to execute or you're not. Me yelling at you is not going to make a difference on if you're going to, you know, if you're going to pass a, a good ball or a bad ball, or you're going to hit the ball out or into the net. Like it, it really doesn't, it really doesn't, go with what we're trying to do. And I would say we have some coaches on, on the staff that are a bit, we'll call them yellers. Um, but the, the vast majority of the coaches here talk like I'm talking to you right now. And I think the girls respond, you'll, you'll get some, some girls that respond to the yelling and, and actually whether they're coaches, kids themselves, or the, you know, they've just grown up a different way. They're okay with it. But I would argue that the vast majority of girls want to be talked to like we're talking here, you and I. Well, and, and the whole thing about, you know, wanting to be coached hard, I think you can coach hard without degrading. And, and when you talk about those things, we can treat them like um, human beings. And, and uh, I always say I had a daughter, but I'm like, I think you can coach my daughter hard without, you know, um, making it personal or running them into the ground, no. you know, um, no doubt. Which maybe it was before, and, and I tell people that's part of the reason I got too grumpy and too stressed out and everything. My coaching career and ended it because it yeah. wasn't it was good. And so I, I don't know I, when I hear it, I, I love it because again, my education's been from the Kairos gym, and I've told them so many times, and I've told parents I, I go into open gyms, I go into practices, and I don't see them raising their voices right, like. They're the opposite of what I was. And I'm like, dang it, I wish I could have done that. Um, and and I see the respect in that gym. And I've seen, I've seen where their program has gone. It's not like they're screwing around and they're the worst volleyball club in America. They yeah. have very good results. And when I, I've seen that for five or six years, I'm like, this is working. Um, and, and, and I love it personally. Um, I don't think it would have been very hard for me. And I'm glad I got out of coaching when I did, I guess. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the we'll talk more a little bit about your club. I want to take a break just real quick right now and, and go into some of our spotlight profiles. We get this done and come back and talk a lot more legacy um, after that with Tyler Strom, 15s coach. Uh, but while we do that, we're going to bring up our uh, three sp uh, spotlight player profiles a week from VBAdrenaline.com. And uh, it has been so amazing for us, especially during Triple Crown, how not only we've added a lot of spotlight profiles, but some high level prospects that now we're going to get to follow all the way, not only through their big recruiting or verbal, all the way through their signing day um, and, and really even into college. So it's kind of cool, again, for people that don't know, our player profiles are a little mini resume um, that athletes can go and update at any time with honors, awards, college camps. It's going to be fun to watch a lot of these 26s as we go through their big summer that's coming up starting in June. And first, uh, Rockwood Thunder Elite. Uh, setter Abby Schoen and uh, getting to meet Abby at Triple Crown was so cool. You see where she's camped, but just a very solid um, setter in that Rockwood Thunder program. And with a block touch of 111 already, definitely has the physical profile uh, to go with the intellect that she plays with. Um, and you know she's getting the skills taught at Rockwood Thunder Elite. So Abby Schoen, uh, setter, class of 2026. Next, Hayden Connor. And uh, man, you want to talk about the Twin Towers out there in Phoenix, place of the Arizona Storm. And so impressed with their overall 16s team. But but Hayden as well, um, and got to see her, the Under Armour camp. You look um, at, she's already had some experience, attended some pretty high-level camps in her area. Talking with her, she wants to expand out a little bit more and just take a peek this summer, maybe a couple things away from home. Uh, you look at her top testing scores already uh six foot two touching a hundred block touch of 115 inches so hayden Con connor part of a very very good arizona storm uh 16s team 
And last, uh, you know, what would uh, Spotlight Week be without uh, somebody from Texas and that loaded 2026 class in the state of Texas, but Madison Victoriano and uh, we've got to see her at NTDP. Uh, we interviewed her during her high school season. And you take a look at her numbers, but take a look at her resume. And you can read the entire thing on the website. But her coming up um, this year and playing up at a bigger club uh, for her 16s year. Uh, so intelligent on the court, soft-spoken, but a leader and uh, as fundamentally sound as maybe any setter you're going to see in the class. So Madison has a huge summer coming up for her, just another one of those talented Texas prospects. So those are our three spotlight uh, prospect profiles. And you can see all of our athletes as that number continues to grow and grow and grow. And again, follow this through. It, it tells their story a little bit as we go through their recruiting journey, their volleyball journey, all the way to college. And, and we'll keep following, following them even into college, but gives you an idea where they might be looking um, as their recruitment comes up. So again, if you want to uh, Create your own profile. Go to vbadrenaline.com and update as early and as often as you'd like. And thanks uh, to everybody that's done that so far. Uh, I enter each and every one of them, so I get to know everybody. And it really helps me with all of these names and all this talent all around the country. So uh, those are three for this week. And now let's head back and let's talk a little bit more with uh, Coach Ron. And so, Tyler, speaking of that and speaking of 16s, the legacy, talk a little bit. Though you weren't their coach last year. Talk about the 16s A team at Legacy and Nash are champions at Triple Crown. So, obviously, a ton of talent. But just talk about that talent a little bit on that team alone. I definitely think Ricky would be the one who is uh, who who's been with this group for a while, and I mean knows this team as well as anybody. But I mean, it's it's it doesn't take a genius to see they're strong through the middle, and what I mean by that is you know you can run an inside out offense with you know, Meredith, who's their libero, who's as good of a libero as we have in the club. Eva does a great job running the middles, and you got two middles like Kayla and, and Ella that are just, I mean, they're outstanding, and you know, it, if, if they can pass, and most of the time they can, um, to be able to give your middles one-on-one -on -one opportunities over and over and over again is what make them successful. And then to have a hammer on the, uh, you know, on the left, like Gabby, it just, I mean, pick your poison. You, you know, you got to put four hands up against one of them and, and you can't put four hands up against both. So, you know, for you to have to, to deal with them when they're in system, they're they're elite, elite, elite. And you saw that this weekend that I actually watched the last player you profiled, uh, Madison. Yeah. The skyline said she's, she's outstanding. Like her ability to run the court, her tempo, the, you know, the, just the consistency in which she plays is, is outstanding. And, you know, for, for this team to do as well as they did at, at triple crown, I know, I know Rick was extremely happy with how they performed. I know Jen was extremely happy with how they performed, and I think that if this team, you know, if this team can continue to pass the ball well, offensively they're they're outstanding. And I think sneakily, their their defense is, you know, they're tough. And 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 you have to be able to pull them off the net to be able to run, you know, to run your offense in transition. Because if you if you give them enough opportunities, they're going to bury you. <clears throat> yeah, and and we talk. Um... I always find that balance I forget as we're covering, you know, uh, admittedly so more individual wise, we talk about prospects recruiting and, and, and uh, those types of things. And remember that y'all are there to win tournaments, right? Which is a complete team effort in volleyball, probably more so than any other team sport. It takes everybody. Um, so to watch them, but going into that open or uh, the power pools, it just wasn't a team that we heard coming in a lot. We heard about all the talent in Texas, right? And the talented, you know, Skyline teams, which were there. And you're right. They just, with their defense, and then they kept getting these big win after big win after big win. And um, 
the the matchup I talked to you off camera about me with my old football experience, but watching them in Mintonet in the finals. And I'm like, oh, yes, we have that classic Michigan versus Ohio rivalry. Can I ask you, is are there rivalries amongst clubs or even their friendly rivalries? I would say there is from from a club standpoint, there's friendly rivalries and there's unfriendly rivalries. And I can tell you our 17s have a have a few unfriendly rivalries <laughs> with a club down in Florida that have been I mean, they've been fighting with them, you know, forever. And, you know, that that's an example of two teams that just don't really care for each other. Um, and then you have, you know, a friendly rivalry, which I would argue, like with this team that I'm coaching this year, it's yeah. hard to not the, the group of girls that 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 this team has put together with. It's hard not to to just genuinely enjoy their coming. So I would I would say that we we have quite a few friendly rivalries, but oh, no, there's definitely some teams that just genuinely don't care for each other. You know, and that's that's actually what makes it fun as coaches, because you don't get a lot of that in this sport and just in the women's game in general. Like we don't really see a ton of it. So to have two teams that actually don't care for each other, it 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 amps you up a little bit, even as a coach. Well, it, and with that, I see that and I get the you know, I've heard so many times last couple of years. Well, volleyball just doesn't do that. Right. But. These girls are training. They are putting in so many hours. They're investing so much. They want to win. It is totally okay to have an extremely competitive female athlete. And then you put a group of them together. You know, it may not come at, come out as, you know, roses and um, butterflies every time. And to me, I'm like, that's okay to be that ultra competitive. And to go where a lot of them want to go, they have to be. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's sheep and there's shepherds. Right. And I mean, they're the, the shepherds. You can't have 10 of them or everybody's pulling in, you know, pulling in a different direction. And you can't have 10 sheep because then they're just wandering aimlessly like a boat without a rudder. So, you know, it, it's nice to have, you know, we have a couple of, of of our top teams all have that that alpha personality. That's that super competitive and, you know, the, the get on my back type mentality. And that's yeah. you, you have to have it like you 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 will not have you will not sustain success as a team if you don't have that. Yeah, I love the the fire they play the play with and what what's something you've seen maybe whether it's within legacy or just the sport in general. Obviously the explosion on the college level right now in the, in the pro leagues which I I think are amazing. Mm-hmm. The girls can dream of that and it's a realistic dream and they can yeah. stay home and make money doing what they're great at. But what maybe at the club level what are some of the major changes where either you're like, I didn't think that ever happened or, Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening in a good way. I think so. I mean, at legacy, I can just tell you that, you know, when I started coaching 13s, I don't know, I think six, seven years ago, um, the, the, the emphasis wasn't on the younger teams. It was all on the older teams because I mean, they're, they're what, there provide the content, right? That's, that's what your, that's what your focus is. Um, and I think that once that we started paying more attention to the younger age groups, I mean, we have a nine ones team this year, never, ever, ever would I have expected. And I mean, they're not traveling, you know, anywhere near what, what our, what our normal teams or what our national teams travel, but like the fact that they're playing organized volleyball yeah. six on six at nine years old, I mean, they're going to get their teeth kicked in for probably at least two years, you know, while they're playing 12, you know, 12 open. But like by the time they get to that, that 12 open and they're actually 12 years old, they've been playing it for four years. So like whether we have the the talent or not, or I shouldn't say whether we have the athlete or not, you know, the system is so good because these girls have been together forever. And I think the second thing is just the sheer amount of money that these parents dump into this sport is, is, I mean, our parents are spending between club dues, travel, food, whatever it is all in anywhere from 18 to $25,000 a year. I mean, it's, that's, that's insane. Like that blows your mind when, yeah. when you think about something like that, because it's a kid's game, this is a child's game and, and it's not anymore because it's, it's business. And especially with NIL now, I mean, it's, we're going the other way from it being, 
not so much. I mean, it's a kid's game up until about 15. And then it, you know, as soon as they get into high school and you start seeing the lists and the, you know, and the recruiting websites and all that stuff, it yeah. stops becoming as much about a game and more about a job, which is good or bad. I mean, it's great for us because the talent, not just in, in, in at legacy and in Michigan has never been, but, but nationally has never been better than it is right now. But I mean, it's, it comes with a sacrifice and, you know, in our gym, you're not allowed to play basketball. You're not allowed to play softball. You're not allowed to like, if, if you want to run track, that's fine, but practice comes first. And if you miss practices, then, you know, we have a spot for you, but it might not be on our top team or on our top two teams because just our, our travel intensive schedule is, is daunting. Yeah. And you can't sign up for those open division plays and take eight out of, you know, six no. out of your top eight and have two miss for, you know, whatever. Cause you just, you get crushed in those tournaments then. For sure. No yeah, doubt. Totally. I, well, I, I understand that too. And the, the numbers and, and the recognition and, and the notoriety, it's like we talked about, I, I saw it. Um, being a former football coach, right? I saw that big money years ago, and now I think that's coming into volleyball. It's good, and there's positives and negatives to all of it. Um, but I, I do think you hit on something that the talent level has never been higher. And at a younger age, right, the, these girls are doing amazing things. At um, I just posted a reel of a girl in my hometown as a seventh grader. The, play up on varsity next year and 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 not she's winning under armors you know mvp and i'm like 2029 if i'm yeah. even yeah i'm not retired by the time she graduates high school it's crazy I mean, though we got, we got sixth graders grabbing the rim on a basketball hoop it's just like what where are we and and when did this start becoming a thing that you know girls have gotten so athletic so early it's just it's it's insane it really is with, with that though, and how hard they train, and how they're more, they're I think female athletes are more healthy and athletic than ever. Um, I'm so glad we moved past the days of you know rail thin. Like you have to be athletic. Do you think that comes with added self confidence? I, I just see so many young girls that are more appear more confident now because of what they're accomplishing during their training. Yeah, and I think it's that's that's a perfect way to put it because before you know it was not cool to be sweating in a gym doing a workout you know and have anybody see anything like that and now these gyms are posting these girls of of you know lifting weight and doing plyometrics and and doing all this different stuff and it's 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 in it's cool like it's it should be like you're you're bettering yourself you're bettering you're bettering your body you're you're becoming more healthy like why we wouldn't showcase that and, and advertise that is, is nuts. Yeah. And, and I mean, shout out kind of Northern spotlight athlete, little uh, after school workout goes out and touches 10, five and a half, and then goes to the two and a half hour volleyball workout. And, uh, and she's at 2026. I'm like, <laughs> and then he asked, have you ever dunked? And she's like, what? I'm like, go dunk it, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, put that on your put that on your recruiting profile. You'll get you somebody's gonna look at you. Well, you know that I mean, as athletic and graceful as some of them are, let's go start doing one eighties, right, and three sixties, and that's coming next. And then, oh, yeah. oh, by the way, go do a two and a half hour club volleyball workout. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> and then a little bit of homework at ten thirty at night. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the student athlete <laughs> thing. We we got to make sure that student. Well, that, I'll tell you what. Are you guys? So, what's your guys' schedule? I'm sure qualifier. You guys on the qualifier? Are you on your way to on your way to Orlando this weekend? Yep. So 16s and 17, 12s, 16s and 17s are going this weekend. 13s, 14s, and 15s go next weekend. But I mean, we're, this is, you know, the season, it seems long, but once you get into it, I mean, once, once you hit triple crown, it's, you know, it's almost like one weekend off, one weekend on for the yeah. next two months. And, you know, we're having situations where we, uh, the you know, the 15s go back to back qualifiers. And I think we fly in on Tuesday and we leave on Thursday. I'm not even sure we get a practice in, but I think we get one practice in between, between a qualifier and it. That's if we decide to practice because you just played, you know, three days of, of high level volleyball 
that it's yeah it'll it'll be april you know and and late april before you know it and it's it's a grind this is the part of the season that you gotta you gotta stay healthy more than anything else but i mean there's definitely i hate the term load management but you have to there is some degree of like you can't just beat these kids up for the next two and a half months or you're not going to have a team you know come nationals yeah that that's the thing I learned. I, I did not get that before I started doing this, that it's FOMO. I'm like, oh, I don't want to miss that. I'm skipping this weekend. Um, hopefully I get to meet you in Indianapolis. But I'm like, oh, I don't want to miss that. Oh, I have to go to that. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, my dogs hate me. I, I, yeah. I, I Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had another job to do too. But, man, I appreciate your time. And I will – um, meet you in Indianapolis. I'm excited, man. I know this started with uh, breaking down some uh, some really cool Instagram reel, but but I'm glad I got to meet you. And you've taught me a lot, and I love what your program's doing. I'm excited to learn a lot more about your athletes and your kids. But uh, but uh, keep that up, and um, I love. I know that was just a snippet, but I love the way you're coaching and teaching um, young females, man. That's uh, that's a new trend, and that's the way to do it. Well, hey, I appreciate the time. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the, the V-Ball adrenaline thing, we could always use more more publicity for this sport. And I, I think it's only going to go in one direction. So we, uh, we appreciate it for sure. I know, man. I, I Every day I want to take off. I'm like, somebody's coming for us. We better get back to work because I don't think the uh, media is going to slow down with volleyball, but we do the best we can. And hey, everybody, that's going to wrap up another uh, episode of uh, VB Adrenaline Podcast. And again, please check out our website. If you like, like what we're talking about here, um, check out our Instagram, vbadrenaline.com underscore. Uh, we're, on, we're on the X at VB Adrenaline and subscribe to our website check us out uh we promote and educate uh through the recruiting process and i love where we're going um i can do this 24 7 man it's it's been a fun ride and we're going to talk to more and more great coaches like tyler um, and great athletes uh coming up so thanks for joining us uh tune in and and we'll see you all soon